This is meant to be a brief guide. If I'm going too fast, please use the pause button. To start the quest, use the spirit tree at the Grand Exchange to go to the Tree Gnome Stronghold. Run south out the gate and run west until you get to this location on the map. You'll see a gang of fire makers stood around an entrance to a tunnel. Talk to Phoenix to start the quest. Pause the video now to see the requirements. Once inside the tunnel, talk to Flint who will give you a pitch can. The pitch can is used to create fire, so use it to complete an arrow shape made of fires shown on the screen. When you've done it right, it will disappear, then you can move on to the next room. There's a lot of dialogue here, so all you need to know is light the fire pit, skip through the dialogue and take the journal from the stand nearby. Once the dialogue is finished, someone will be killed and you can move on through the tunnel nearby. Once you're in the next room, read the fire maker's guide section of the journal to see the shape that you need to make with the fires, like the previous one with the arrow, only this time it's a different shape. Once you finish this room, the shape will disappear and the rocks will start to fall from the ceiling. Avoid these rocks by watching the shadows on the ground, then pick up the rocks once they've landed and add them to the pile of rocks on the east side of the room. You can only pick up one rock at a time. Once the pile is big enough, you can climb up it and move on to the next room. Light the fire in the room and take the next journal. Choose whoever you think is possessed and tie them up at the pillar next to the fire. I personally chose Twig and it was correct. You'll have to do this for every camp you come to from now on, so bear that in mind. After you tie someone up, the room will go dark, light the fire again and you'll be able to move on to the next room. Read the fire maker's guide in the journal again to see which shape you'll need to make next. This time you'll need to use two different colours when lighting fires. At the entrance to the room are two stands with red and yellow powder. Take some of each coloured powder and use them to complete the puzzle. After you've completed the puzzle, there'll be waves of fire coming at you from across the room. Stand in the gap in these walls to survive and move on. For this next part, I'd recommend having some food just in case, but don't worry about dying too much because if you do die, you'll get pulled out of the room and won't lose your stuff, so it's completely safe. Head all the way west and light the fire pit and push the column switch to raise a pillar. Head all the way east using the newly raised pillar to light the fire and push the next column to raise another pillar. Head back round west and then proceed northeast avoiding the fires. Watch the pattern of the fires before running through if you're low on food, otherwise just run through. Jump to the pillar then pull the column slightly to the north. Head east and pull the next column next to the one you just pulled. Jump to the pillar to the east and pull the column, then head all the way west while pulling the column on the way that you haven't pulled yet. Jump across the ledge to the west, light the fire and push the column. Head back east and pull the lever to make the bridge of pillars move to the other side of the fire, blocking your path to the north. Run north and jump to the ledge without fire on it and push the fire switch. Head back east and jump to the other ledge, continue east and enter the tunnel to exit the room. Light the fire again, take the journal, tie up whoever you think is possessed. I personally chose Sarah and it was correct. Light the fire again and go through the tunnel to continue. This next puzzle now uses three different coloured fires. See which shape you need to make in the fire maker's guide and use the different coloured powders to complete the puzzle. Once you've completed the puzzle, there will be two more fire waves. Avoid them and move to the next room. In this room, light an oil pull round the edge of the room to begin the puzzle. Light the oil pulls to create a line of fire which should prevent the flames from reaching you and just keep running away until all the waves are complete. This may take a while to do so please be patient. Once you've done this head to the next room for another game of guess who's possessed. The one I personally chose for this was incorrect so you might want to choose a different one. Once you're done head to the next room. In this room there's another puzzle with three different coloured flames so solve it then light the fire pit nearby. Once it's lit, quickly grab a torch from it, and whilst holding the torch, head down the path that lies ahead of you. Whilst walking down the path, there'll be some really creepy shadows that appear on your screen, and just click wherever they're coming from to swat them away. After that, play another round of Guess Who's Possessed. I personally chose the wrong person again this time. Just do it, and then proceed onwards. Now comes the boss fight. To begin, pick up the journal on the stand in front of you and skip through the dialogue. At this point, I would recommend banking and getting out some energy potions and lots of food as well as a ranged weapon which is really fast, such as throwing knives. It doesn't really matter which type of knives you bring, you could bring bronze or iron. This fight is quite strange. Your damage is determined not by your stats and gear as such, but more in terms of the attack speed, which is why I've gone for knives because they're really fast and the ranged as well, which makes it a lot easier. Once you're ready for the fight, head down the steps in the room and confront Char. Once you talk to her, she'll grow and become aggressive, which is when you should start running the hell away. The basic strategy of this fight is to keep lighting fires which will make your attacks hit higher and will also make Char's hits hit lower. Bear in mind that you can't run through fires but neither can Char so try and use that to your advantage, especially if you choose to use range. Just also be aware that Char will sometimes do an AoE stomp attack which will eliminate nearby fires that you've made, thus reducing your damage that you can do. 
Light about 5 to 10 fires and keep attacking Char, then running away. Every so often, some sparks will float around the room. Load them into a fire that you've made to get a small buff. If they catch up to you, they will do a small amount of damage, but it's very minimal. Every so often, Char will enrage, dealing more damage and becoming resistant to your attacks. At this point, you can either lure her into the pools at the bottom to cool her off, or you can just stay away from her and it'll wear off after a while. When you get her to around half health, firewalls will start to sweep the area just like earlier on in the quest, running to the gap in the firewall to avoid certain death and having to start over. Keep repeating all this until you get her to really low health and then she will eventually surrender. You won't actually kill her. Ask her if you can leave the area and use the exit at the back of the room to complete the quest. Now the Book of Char reward that you receive gives 2-3 to three minutes, I believe, of double fire making XP once per day. Which means once every 24 hours you can activate this uh, double XP reward. So that's it's alright, I guess. Uh, to get the fire pets that they've been on about, you have to go back into the tunnel where Char is and pick up one of the fire pets that are floating around for yourself. There's four to choose from, I think, so plenty to choose from. And the Char's training method consists of creating shapes out of fires with the pitch can, like earlier on in the quest, which gives some fire making XP once per week. Anyway, I hope this guide's been a great help. Be sure to thumbs up the video and subscribe if you liked this video. Otherwise, I will see you next time.